We get to do a lot of interesting projects on this show, and today is no exception. So you're probably wondering why we cut a hole in the floor. What's going to go in it? Well, I'll tell you. You might have seen one in an old movie, or even read about them in books, and you might have thought they went the way of the dinosaur, but they didn't. What we're talking about are dumb waiters, and joining me today for this project is Fred Broyan. Hi, Fred. Hi, Teresa. Now, for people who don't know, what exactly is a dumb waiter? A dumb waiter is a lifting device that's used for transporting groceries uh, between floors in a home. It might be used for businesses to transport documents, uh, applications, such like that. So this is a mini elevator? Yes, it is. Now, if you put this in a home for people to transport their groceries upstairs and things, is this something that the homeowner can do themselves? The advanced do-it-yourself homeowner could do an, an installation on a dumbwaiter, although many contractors do installations for the uh, customer. Okay, well, let's go ahead and show them what we've already done by getting a hole in the floor. Teresa, in this application, we had to remove a floor joist. We got in a qualified contractor who did the necessary bracing underneath in order that we get our opening. Well, another good reason the homeowner might want to hire a contractor is because if there's any plumbing or electrical wires in the floor, they can fix it right on the spot. But Fred, not every application is going to be the same. I mean, they may not have to cut through a floor joist, right? That's correct. We have two smaller units that are available that fit between 16 inch on center and 24 inch on center floor joists. Okay, well, our next step is to build a frame to go over this opening that's going to hold the motor and the sliding mechanisms. We've already pre-assembled our walls, but Fred, if a homeowner or a contractor wants to order this completely pre-assembled and ready to install, is that possible? Yes, that's possible. It saves a lot of installation time on the project. Well, that's a good thing on a project as large as this. Now, on this particular application, we're using three-inch drywall screws to assemble the walls. All right, now we have our frame built and we're ready to attach the motor assembly. Now this is going to raise and lower the dumbwaiter between the floors. Teresa, our units come pre-wired and pre-assembled from the factory. So there's no complicated wiring, all we have to do is plug this in. That's correct. Okay, let's lower this down in place. Okay, now we can go downstairs and start on the frame down there. Okay, Teresa, now that we're downstairs, we need to mount the base assembly into position. It's important that we get this plumb in relation to the upper motor assembly to assure smooth operation of the unit. Okay, Fred, let's use the level to make sure that our guidepost is plumb, and that looks good there, so we know the base is in the right position. Now, this is a good project to do in new construction or even if you're remodeling, which in this case, this homeowner is. We're drilling into a concrete slab, so we're going to use a hammer drill and concrete anchors to mount this base. Fred, if you wouldn't mind standing on that so I can start drilling, we'll get started. Okay, Teresa, now that you've installed the first of the two guide rails, we'll set the lift container into position. Okay, this is our second guide rail. And I'm going to slide this into the bracket back here, which goes right in between the plastic guide post. And I'm going to shoot some screws down here to hold it in place, and then we're also going to go upstairs and do the same thing. Teresa, now that you've installed the second guide rail assembly, I've attached the belt and the wire rope assembly. This is what will raise and lower the lift container. Okay, well, Fred, the next thing we're going to do is put in the stop system, and this slides over the guide rail. And you can see that when the dumbwaiter comes down, this will stop it at just the right height for us to have easy access in and out. Teresa, what I'm going to do is take the second stop assembly and uh, go in the upstairs and install that. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and put in a couple of screws to attach this. Teresa, what I'm doing here is lacing the belt assembly through the pulley system. What I'll do now is hand down the return wire to you, and you'll install that down through the guide rail into the bottom of the lift container. Okay, Fred, I've got it. Now I'm going to run this down the guide rail and put it underneath the pulley, and then take it underneath this other pulley. Make sure that the wire stays underneath both of the pulleys, and then you can take out the slack. And now we're ready to test it. 
Teresa, I've now completed the can't miss wiring harness, and what I have here is a call button. Would you like to give it a try? I would. Wow, that's coming down really smooth. Fred, this is really nice. Well, now that we know it works, let's go ahead and frame in the walls. Just like we did upstairs, we built a frame around the unit. Next, I'll hang drywall to close this in. It's going to look great when we're finished. Fred, I like the door. Thanks, Teresa. These are one of the doors that we supply with our kits. We have two safety features on it. One safety feature is, is the unit will not operate with the door in the open position. And the second feature is, is we have a key lock. Well, this is really nice. Fred Broy, and thank you very much for your help. Thank you, Teresa. This unit is made by Butler's Buddy, and the prices start at $2,200 and up, depending on your application. This is just an old idea made new again, and it's going to make your life a lot easier.